Hello and welcome to Grocer Pod. My name is Sean Kasednar. Today I'm joined by Damon Senior Director Emma Bryan to explain Damon's important partnership with AWG Brands. But before I get to Emma, I want to remind you to please subscribe to Grocer Pod. Subscribing means new episodes will be downloaded for you each week. You can find Grocer Pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform you use. AWG Brands is supported by a third party agency called Damon. Damon brings expertise in supplier relations, label design and management, web development, creative services, strategic advisory, and more. Many of the Damon team members are in-house at AWG and work side-by-side with category management to represent AWG brands. Emma Bryant is here in studio to talk about how that works. Thanks for joining me today, Emma. Thanks, Sean. Firstly, appreciate having me on this edition of Grocer Pod and looking forward to some great discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about Damon and the team that collaborates with AWG. Absolutely. So Damon is probably a company very few people have heard of if you're not in the private brands industry. And we're a company that works end to end with retailers uh, and wholesalers, both domestically and globally, to help develop their private brands programs from strategy to execution, and also to consumer engagement. And really our unique approach helps retailers and brands set themselves apart, you know, whether it's from boosting brand presence, category effectiveness, and speed to shelf. So we have a team that works inside of AWG's head office, as you mentioned, and we support all aspects of the private brand program. We've had the privilege of supporting AWG for the last two and a half years to help support and grow AWG brands for their members. There are four key areas that we support AWG brands on site in the Kansas City office. That's business management, analytics and insights, supply chain customer service and project management. Really what we do AWG is at the heart of that, and we have that hub-and-spoke approach. In addition to the on-site team, we also have other remote support teams, which I'll talk a little bit further as we go through our conversation here. Yeah, so a huge part of what you do uh, that helps AWG brands uh, is helping them with the product development. Can you walk us through that process? Sure. It's a multifaceted approach with many different stages that can take around a year from start to finish. Really the key milestone that we're looking at here is getting the product to shelf to support the category initiative, category review, or even the category refresh dates. And by doing that, we collectively ensure that they're the best possible success for launch for a new item happens. And really tying into those activities helps build the distribution, which we know is key to AWG brand success. In this process, is actually 10 key steps. Now, I'm not going to go into every step in great depth um, because some are more important than others. But what's interesting to know too, within those 10 steps, there could be 20, 25 additional steps within that. So it's really um, a very in-depth process. And I think consumers probably don't think much about what does it take to get that box of cereal to shelf. And the AWG brands in partnership with Damon, we help make that come to life. So really the first step that we that we focus on is that pre-meeting before diving into any numbers, thinking about what's the next item. It's really understanding, you know, what is going to be the focus. Um, and our business management team meets with our category insights team to share what are we hearing from supplier partners, what's happening in the competitive environment, and really have there been any big shifts in the national brand environment too within the last year. The next step and probably the most in-depth piece is the development of a robust category review. Our analytics and insights team can normally take up to a couple of weeks to prepare prepare a deep dive. Um, 
with a number of different categories, again, with the key being to support the category initiative process. And as part of that, we, we present to the stakeholders, which include the category directors, the category managers, uh, the director of AWG Brands Marketing, and also to the executive director of AWG Brands, not forgetting to the sourcing managers, which pay, play an integral role in this. So before we start pulling numbers, we think, well, what's the most important question here? Why is this category important to AWG and their members from a private brand perspective? So we take a 30,000 view look at the category in terms of what's happening with the national brands. What are the top national brands? What are they doing? What new launches have they had? You know, are there certain segments within the category that are growing or contracting? And then what are other retailers doing from a private brand perspective as well? We also look at category trends and insights. And one of the key areas within that is really understanding what are competitors doing, whether it's Walmart, whether it's Kroger, Aldi, but also Dollar General, you know, what is happening in the value channel. So understanding those key markets and those markets within which AWG members compete is so important. So that gives a a good frame of reference. We also look at consumer trends for the category. Um, You know, what are some of the new flavor trends? What are some of those categories that I said are, are, are growing or contracting? Is AWG in those certain areas within that category that they're not in today too? Also, too, is AWG positioned well against their peers? That obviously is critically important, too. We also take that 30,000 feet view look and we dial in specifically to what's happening within AWG brands. So the categories that are sub-segments that are performing well at a national level, are they performing, is AWG performing uh, the same level there as well? Are there sub-segments that AWG brands isn't playing in uh, within private brands today that may be growing from a national perspective at other retailers too? So we pull all that information together to really give us a good overview of some of the areas that we should be collectively considering. Part of the deep dive that we do as well is looking at the planograms. Are all the items that have been launched in the couple of years, in the last couple of years, are they in the planogram? Are the top selling items in all planograms? Are the items that have just launched and the items that have been out there for several years, what is their distribution, you know, amongst the different um, key equity groups or even from a divisional perspective too? So just doing that checks and balances to make sure that the items are represented as they should be. A couple of other areas that we look at too is the competitive assortment analysis. And that is where we look at all the different items that competitive retailers are carrying from a private brand's perspective within that space. Just to ensure, are there any items that AWG may be missing and not carried today? And then we also do um, ad tracking analysis understanding what is the right time of year and when should key categories be promoted. So for instance, do you necessarily promote soup in the middle of summer? Do you promote ice cream in the middle of winter? So we were able to really take that deep dive look at what is happening again in the competitive market space, but to set AWG brands up for success from the promotional planning perspective. So we pull all of that information together and we come up with a robust assortment of recommendations, rationalizations, and some recommendations on promotional planning. And we look at those recommendations through the lens of the four Ps, product, price, promotion, and place. A key piece within this too is looking at the different items through the lens of the different brand guardrails, always save, best choice, superior selections, and clearly. This ensures that we're tying everything together under the lens of those four key brands. The third step is the assortment review. 
and this really is the point where we recap the key takeaways from the category review and we review the financial performance of each and every item. So it's not just looking at the performance of cases sold through the warehouses, but actually the stores that sell the items, how many units per store are they selling? And that enables AWG really to be laser focused on that true product profitability. Another important step within that is really understanding the fit of each item within the brand guardrails. Are there items that are in best choice that probably should be in always safe because they're an opening price point or the best value? Or are there items that are in best choice today that don't have a national brand match and they are actually an elevated eating experience that probably should be in superior selection? So we look at collectively those recommendations through the brand guardrails. So the fourth step in the process is creating a strategy document. And that's where the Damon business manager works collectively and very closely with the category manager to really develop an overarching strategy document for that category. Again, it focuses on product, price, promotion and place and really gives that high level overview of where the category is moving. The next step is step five, which is the RFP or bid process. And in some instances here, Sean, AWG may decide to take the category to bid. So this is where the sourcing team will take over at that point. So the next step we have is step six, and that's the project kickoff. This is when the business managers will formally kick off the new item development process by utilizing Damon's product lifecycle management tool, tool called Blueprint. Our team meets weekly to ensure that all milestones are being met, and this ensures that the product hits the shelf in time for the reset. So this is really when we swing into gear and the product comes to life. After the projects are entered into the project management tool, there are two key pieces that really have to happen before the product is produced. The first one is going through the quality assurance process, which really is that rigorous third party testing to ensure that the quality and the safety of the product is there for the consumers. After that, there is the process of designing the packaging. So our Damon design team works with supplier partners and AWG on the development of the packaging. So it can take anywhere from four to eight weeks on average, depending on the type of packaging used and also the manufacturer's lead time to production. So the product is nearly there. It's been produced. It's in its packaging. It's at the dock waiting to be picked up by the truck. So the purchase orders are written to get the product in the warehouse. And then once it comes in the warehouse, it obviously ships to the members. So I've talked about a 10 step process. Within that, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of additional details that go into it. So it takes a lot to get a product from ideation to shelf. Quite a lot of steps there. Um, I kind of want to focus on the beginning because I think that's uh, kind of the most interesting, at least to me. Um, you mentioned a, a whole lot of different things that could drive the need for a new product. Is there any one of them that's more important than the others? I think that's a great question, Sean. Um, uh Collectively, AWG, the AWG Brands team and Damon take a very much data-driven approach um, to the business. And that shift has really taken over the last couple of years. And as we've collectively um, developed and improved upon the process, um, we really look at what, how big is that segment? What are other retailers carrying? Now, that's not to say that other items that are in the competitive marketplace today are out there and performing well, but knowing that the members have a limited space on their shelf, so making sure that any new items that uh, are being recommended are those ones that we know are data-backed and that are going to have success and that manufacturers also have that track record as well of being able to produce that item. That makes a lot of sense. One of the things that I find really interesting about private label in general is in other you know parts of the business, you can be very proactive, but it seems like in in private label, you almost like by definition have to be reactive. And how does how does that like impact just like day to day operations and thinking? Sure. What I would say is there's 
there's a couple of different aspects we, we think about from that perspective. The first one, too, is competitive intelligence. What's happening in the marketplace? What are new launches coming out by the brands? There are some instances where private brands are able to launch maybe a couple of months afterwards, um, but maybe it has to be a year. Part of it, too, is playing that waiting game sometimes, too, to understand if that product from the national brands has longevity as well because obviously there's a huge amount of new items that will that are launched every year none more so in the early stages of the pandemic as well really where the national brands had um, really focused on new item innovation so we know that a lot of the new items tend to fail within the last 12 to 24 months. And so knowing that um, based on resources and looking at competitive activity in the marketplace, you have to kind of use that surgical precision when understanding when is it the right time to launch a new item. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think in in one sense that takes some of the pressure off because you, you're letting the, the national brands come up with the new ideas and then you're just able to capitalize on the ones that are actually good and that people want. Absolutely. And I also want to sort of build on that too, Sean, because outside of the large national brands, there's been a huge proliferation of small specialty brands, which have actually been taking share from some of the larger national brands. It's balancing some of those national brand launches, those, those bigger brands, with that proliferation of the smaller brands and understanding where does private brands fit within that. Are you looking to emulate a small startup brand or are you looking to um, really focus on going after some of those tried and true national brand line extensions potentially? Um, so we went through the whole uh, product development cycle and that's obviously a huge part of what Damon does, but what other aspects of AWG Brands business does Damon assist with? Sure. I touched a little bit on the creative design process. Part of that process, too, is not just doing the day-to-day design for um, new projects, helping redesign, but it's also partnering with AWG to potentially build new brands. Where does it make sense, um, given the current portfolio? So there's a lot of collaboration happens there. Another way in which we support AWG brands is through our Damon sourcing team. We have have teams located around the world. Um, whether it's in China, Japan, Europe, um, South America, um, South Africa. And we are here to support AWG brands with any sourcing initiatives that they have. Because of that global reach, we're able to pull in over 10,000 different suppliers globally to meet the needs of AWG brands for any sourcing initiatives. In addition to that, too, we also have a team that uh, manages label management on behalf of AWG and some of AWG's key suppliers, where we manage the inventory and the ordering for some of their packaging. Outside of that, we also supporting the WIC program for AWG brands to ensure that any relevant items that are WIC eligible are registered in the correct states as well. So that's a lot of lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that very few people are aware of. Um, and another area we help to is with a digital services, supporting the AWG brands team uh, as we oversee the operations of the best choice, the clearly by best choice and the always save brands websites too. So really it's from that anything that needs to be touched to bring a product to life, whether it's that sourcing, project management, creative services, and a lot more behind the scenes, we're here to support AWG. Yeah, I mean, obviously AWG Brands is, is such a huge project and uh, it's clear that uh, Damon really helps that uh, be as successful as it is. So Sean, I would say it's it's very much collaborative, working cross-functionally with many areas within AWG, not only the AWG brands team, but the category team, the IMD team, the traffic team, and also the AWG brands regional sales managers as well. So we work, we work cross-functionally with a lot of different teams um, to support every aspect of AWG brands. And for those who work in 
private brands, whether it's private brands, private label, consumer label, your brand, our brand, it can be called a number of different things. People who are in this business are passionate about what they do. We believe in the vision of AWG Brands and it's a fantastic industry to be in. Fast paced, very complex, but it's full of passionate people. And well, that's it for this episode of Grocer Pod. Uh, thank you for joining me, Emma. Thanks, Sean. It's been a pleasure. And again, please like and subscribe Grocer Pod so you can automatically hear all the latest things going on around AWG. And until next time, this has been Sean Kasednar for Grocer Pod. Thank you.